employers to pass on an employee's private information. I call Todd Muller. Madam Chair, and uh, very much appreciate being able to talk uh, this afternoon uh, in my first uh, call to the Employment Relations Amendment Bill. And if there ever is a bill that talks to the fundamental philosophical divide that exists in this House, it is this bill. That's right. And when you think of the language that we've already heard from the government side framing up our current uh, economic conditions that exist in this country, the current uh, employment law that exists in this country through the lens of writing historical grievances and wrongs and that the massive power imbalance that exists in this country, it, it defies belief when you actually uh, consider the reality of this economy that on one breath they are extolling its virtues, its strengths, its position in the OECD, yet somehow uh, in this piece of legislation uh, we are on the verge of a precipice of collapse because the power imbalance is so woefully uh, apparently uh, 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 in the employer's uh, favour. Uh, and, Madam Chair, it does make me wonder when I reflect upon their perspective how many of them have put their capital at risk to start a business? Oh, very few. How many of them have actually worked through the issues of actually trying to uh, develop a good or a service and take it to the market and need people to work with them? There's very few. Most of them are looking at the ground because they come from a theoretical uh, perspective. Now, Madam Chair, uh, the Minister's contributions thus far uh, I have found fascinating because he's clearly decided that the way to try and usher this period of debate that we're having through the House is to lower the tone of his voice uh, and to be, above all else, reasonable. Uh, and what it strikes me as uh, is that this is a strategy of talk softly but carry a big stick. That's right. That's right. Because this bill is the big stick. It's the big stick on New Zealand employers. It's the big stick actually on provincial New Zealand who have a whole series of small to medium-sized businesses, often mum and dad businesses, who are trying to make their way uh, in uh, the New Zealand economy and through that the, uh, uh, you know, the global marketplace. And this is the big stick that he's wielding, but he thinks that perhaps if the language is softened in terms of his response, the image that he will portray through uh, uh, those watching is one of eminent reasonableness. Well, actually, uh, Madam uh, Chair, uh, the area that I'd like to talk about, particularly Clause 13 and 14, uh, and the conversation that we've already started this afternoon about forcing uh, employers to enter into uh, uh, multi-employment uh, collective agreements or one or two, if one or two of, employee, of their employees uh, uh, would like that to be pursued, I think has real risks in constraining uh, growth and investment across regional New Zealand. Now, I represent an area which is going exceptionally, exceptionally well. It's the area of Tauranga, the wider Bay of Plenty. I represent an area which is very strong in terms of uh, its kiwi fruit uh, as a sector. Uh, and I know that uh, there is significant concern that this legislation is going to incrementally, perhaps at first, but roll across the sector a whole lot of obligation in terms of a collective union approach. Uh, and I think that is a very poor uh, uh, impact for a region that is doing exceptionally well. We are doing extraordinarily well in the Bay of Plenty. Where is the need for such regressive uh, legislation? I don't see it. And I am a strong supporter of this very uh, considered uh, uh, SOP in the name of my colleague, uh, Dan Bidwa, that talks to essentially this challenge. Uh, and his suggestion, of course, is to delete uh, clause 13 and 14, and I think if that happened, that would give some of the employers in my region, who are part of an industry which is one of the fastest growing in the country, some comfort that actually the government has heard them, uh, and that there is no need to force such radical change uh, into the, into the uh, uh, employment arrangements of New Zealand. And I found it very telling, uh, Madam Chair, the comments of the minister when he reflected on the Port of Auckland and said they don't have a multi-collective uh, uh, agreement at the moment. He sees no reason why they would rush to that. Uh, he didn't suggest in any way that this, that this legislation would prevent that. Of course, far, far from it. It encourages it. 
But then right at the end, the sting of the tail, he said, but it's all very, but hopefully the ports of Auckland will consider the, the benefits. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Uh, I'll call the Honourable Scott Simpson. Um, I want to just follow up on a couple.